There were some great movies this summer, and then there were these. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst movies of summer 2017. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be counting down 10 movies that weren't treated too kindly by audiences or critics. Here's to hoping next summer we'll have fewer movies like these. You really have no idea, do you? Well, I have several ideas. Number 10, Death Note. Adapting the hit anime and manga series into a feature-length film didn't seem like an easy task, but we figured that director Adam Wingard might just have been able to pull it off. I was actually hoping you could shed some light on that for me. Unfortunately, the American version of the franchise runs into a number of the same roadblocks that often befall adaptations of longer properties. Specifically, a massively overcrowded script that tries to do too much in too little time. Attempting to cram multiple characters, concepts, and plot lines into just a little over an hour and a half, the film just has too much going on and fails to do justice to the source material. You humans are so interesting. <laughs> Number 9, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Guy Ritchie's flashy, big-budget retelling of The Legend of King Arthur certainly isn't lacking in style, with glossy, eye-catching action movie visuals to spare. Unfortunately, the same level of polish isn't present in the film's storytelling and characters, which both fall disappointingly flat. It's a shame, as the Arthur legend has all the ingredients for a fun, exciting action property. Sword fights, epic battles, and depending on how you're playing it, lots of interesting fantasy elements. Give him something big to think about. <laughs> Sadly, though, Richie isn't able to strike the right notes, turning this age-old tale of chivalry and honor into a totally forgettable flash in the pan. Number 8, Wish Upon. I wish Darcy Chapman would just go rot. It's the kind of story that dates back to some of our early myths, be careful what you wish for. Despite the familiar nature of the story, the makers of this horror flick apparently felt we hadn't learned this lesson yet, churning out a tired rehash of something that's already been done better a number of times, and relying on way too many teenage girl cliches for comfort. Get in! What is happening right now? Love? Did that just happen? Surely, most teenagers would wish for something more original than popularity and a cute boyfriend. For starters, they could wish for a better movie. <laughs> Number seven, The Book of Henry. Remind me again why we can't put you in a gifted school. Because it's better for my psychosocial development for me to interact with a peer group in a normal school environment. Oh, yeah. We can't fault Colin Trevorrow's film for lacking in ambition. But don't worry, there's plenty of other things we can fault it for. It's not a terrible idea to use a fairly lighthearted comedy to tackle serious issues like abusive parents, but this film just can't decide which lane it wants to be in, and veers back and forth between tones fast enough to give us whiplash, even with a talented cast of actors led by Naomi Watts. The film just never manages to find the right tone, and when you also factor in the downer of a twist, it's hard to imagine who this movie is even for. You two start already. Now, I'm gonna pretend all this didn't happen, because I've had a hell of a day. Number six, Baywatch. Whoa! <laughs> Shit, I didn't touch you. You dick. Movie revivals of old TV shows rarely work, and this action comedy dud is no exception. Despite the all-star cast including Alexandra Daddario, Zac Efron, Dwayne Johnson, and Dwayne Johnson's oiled pecs, this big screen reboot attempts to turn the popular 90s show into more of a comedy, planting its tongue firmly in its cheek with in-jokes and knowing winks aplenty. You're wearing worker man's shoes? Really? How far have you fallen? This could have been a good strategy, but the writing just doesn't click, and often comes across as too nudge-nudge-wink-wink for its own good. Try as the cast might to resuscitate the franchise, this one is dead in the water. Number 5, The Dark Tower. You can't stop what's coming. Death always wins. A movie adaptation of Stephen King's decade-spanning fantasy epic has been something a lot of people have wanted to see hit movie screens, but given what audiences were met with when the film finally came out, maybe this adventure should have stayed on the page. With a rushed story that tries to throw far too much mythology and world-building at audiences, the film is a pacing nightmare, even with the stellar cast of Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey working their hardest to make it watchable. There's plenty more of Roland Deschain's adventures waiting to be adapted, but they probably won't be hitting cinemas anytime soon. I do not kill with my gun. I kill 
of my heart. Number four, The Mummy. This is the second time that Universal Studios has attempted to kickstart a cinematic universe starring their classic horror monsters, and the second time their efforts have been met with disaster. Not so much a movie as a series of overblown action set pieces and grueling exposition dubs. This horror action spectacle doesn't exactly have us jumping at the bit for more of the dark universe, Russell Crowe's amusingly hammy performance notwithstanding. You see, evil is the shadow that exists just outside our world, uh -huh. continuously searching. The idea of a shared movie universe based around classic movie monsters still has legs, but maybe it'll take another try to get the formula right. Nick! Nick! Let's go! I know where the stone is! Let's go! Number three, Transformers The Last Night. Oh god, I'm sozzled. One last nip. There's a list of things that could make the live-action Transformers movies watchable. Medieval Knights is not on that list. Michael Bay's latest entry into the blockbuster franchise is the biggest, loudest, and dumbest, further muddying the already confusing Transformers movie-verse continuity and stretching the limits of our patience with its confused, addle brain script. Okay, that is the dumbest idea you could possibly have. You'd think that the always classy Anthony Hopkins might have been able to save this franchise, but not even Hannibal Lecter himself could make this assault on the senses bearable. There might have been a time when this movie series could transform into something worthwhile, but that time has passed. But now, our worlds are joined as one. Number two, The Nut Job 2, Nutty by Nature. What are you, a circus dog? I could be. You got a thing for circus dogs? Movies intended for kids don't have to be Shakespeare, but most kids deserve better than this cash-in sequel. While the first film at least had a modicum of charm and wit, this sequel relies on too many tired jokes and worn-out story tropes to be anything other than a distraction for tired parents who just want to keep their kids quiet for a while. Don't mess with the little guy! And for a supposedly major release, the animation on display is surprisingly shoddy, a far cry from other animated films that were released this year. It just goes to show, not even children are safe from lazy sequels. Don't tell me you're scared. There's nothing safer than a dark alley. Ah! Before we reveal our top pick, be sure to stay away from these dishonorable mentions. We understand that there are issues in the inner city. There ain't no inner city, Tan, it's the outer city. You know why? Because we're left out of everything. For this next generation. No rules, no whole spot. No limits, you guys kill each other. My job is to keep you out of harm's way. <laughs> Number one, The Emoji Movie. Aw, snap! Ow. My name is Gene, and I'm supposed to be a meh. Meh. You know, like, meh. In theory, you can make a good movie out of just about anything. But this lame cash grab doesn't do much to support that theory. Movie fans scoffed when it was first announced that a feature film was in the works based entirely on those little icons you put in text messages. And while it would have been fun to see people eat those scoffs, their dismissal turned out to be well-founded. Welcome to the Loser Lounge, where the emojis who never get used hang out. What's up, High Five? Barely justifying its own existence with lame joke after lame joke, this movie is nothing short of a disaster. But what could we have expected from a movie that cast Captain Picard himself, Sir Patrick Stewart, as a talking lump of poo? Okay, son, what do we do after we go potty? Should we wash our hands? <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're number two! two. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.